Hello, this is Jacob Martinez, and I wanted to do a quick recap of my Thinking by the Minute presentation. This is for anybody who is planning a workshop, training event, lecture, or other presentation in front of an audience. It will be especially helpful for those who are just starting out training ACT in particular. No matter where you are in your experience level as a trainer, I think it's safe to say that everybody listening to this has been a student or participant of many different types of training events. So as participants, you might have run into a few common experiences in your time. Here are a couple of questions that I want you to think about. Has anyone been to a workshop where the presenter ran out of time at the end, had to skip material, or rush through slides? Have you ever been to a workshop and wished that there were more time spent on practice and experiential exercises rather than didactic material? Have you ever been to a workshop and wished there was more time for questions and answers or discussion at the end? I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that you answered yes to at least one of those questions. I think all of us have experienced these situations. In fact, not only have I experienced them as a participant in trainings, I have been the presenter that falls victim to each of these challenges. Balancing the content of a training is not easy. Running out of time at the end of an event is a thing that can happen to anybody. But maybe particularly people like us who are so passionate about the material, who really love what they're conveying to the audience and really want to give them as much as possible. We end up cramming so much great content into an event that before we know it, we only have 15 minutes left, but like 45 minutes left of content to go over. So what do we end up cutting in moments like that? experiential exercises, demos, Q&A time, and other interactive pieces end up getting chopped in favor of giving the audience just a little bit more information. So we see that the first challenge, running out of time, often leads directly to the second and third challenge. We have so much excellent content and information that we want to convey that we can easily struggle with the balance of didactic info and practical exercises and demonstrations. Every training event is going to convey information in a variety of ways. Here are a few common components that make up trainings. Didactic material. That's just instruction or presenting information the way I'm doing now. Practical exercises or demonstrations, whether this is something that the audience just watches like a video or participates in like a group exercise. Q&A time. This is a big one for me. I've been to plenty of training events where I learned more during the Q&A than I did during the rest of the event. So I always want to include time for this and any other type of audience interaction, like asking them questions, polling, breakout rooms, things like that. We know that every training event is going to include at least some of these components. Now we have a handful of different types of components that make up a training. And we also have our eagerness to present as much as possible. It can make it hard to balance these components out into something that feels organic. After struggling with the common challenges from the previous slide myself for many years, I started to think about trainings differently. Rather than thinking upfront about the content that I wanted to convey and how, I started focusing on how much time I had allotted for each event first, and then carving it up into chunks of known quantities, leaving me with a set of time that I could then think about filling with specific content. I call this method thinking by the minute. So here's how it works. I want you to imagine that you've just booked your first training and it's an introduction to ACT. Congratulations. Now comes the fun part, thinking about what content to include, 
what kinds of experiential exercises you want to do, preparing for questions that might come up. Piece of cake, right? Maybe you want to give an overview of ACT so that people who aren't familiar get a little bit of everything. So you're thinking definitely the six core processes. Oh, and, and maybe creative hopelessness too. And something about RFT and functional contextualism. And some great exercises and activities that demonstrate each of the processes. Time to debrief and talk about the exercises. And of course, time for questions. It sounds like a plan to me. Ah, but wait, how much time do you have allotted for this presentation? One hour? Oh, okay, that's not a problem. Let's just do some m quick math here. 60 minutes divided by 16 different components. Uh, that would be the six core processes plus RFT plus creative hopelessness plus functional contextualism. That's nine right there. And then six exercises and debriefing and some time set aside for Q&A. That's 16 components to your training and all. So we have 60 divided by 16 and that comes out to 3.75 minutes. That means if you spend every single minute of this presentation, you got to squeeze all of these concepts down into 3.75 minutes each and create exercises and debrief them in 3.75 minutes. And you can maybe take one question at the end. If you've got two hours, you can double the time. So it's 120 minutes, 16, concepts or components that comes out to 7.5 minutes for each component of your training again with not even a minute spared for an introduction of yourself or the audience does that sound doable to you three hours well that would be 11.25 minutes for each component four hours now we're up to 15 minutes for each component. You see, all I'm doing here is taking the time of the training, converting it into minutes, and dividing it by the number of things you want to include in the training. This gives you a very quick insight into how the training might be structured. You might ask yourself, can I really do this many concepts justice in 3.75 minutes? Can I really lead the audience through an exercise and then debrief in so short a time? This works for longer and more advanced trainings too. A friend of mine had the opportunity to do a 16 hour workshop across two days. He asked me for feedback on his outline of the content. I put it into minutes and we began subtracting all of the known quantities. 16 hours is 960 minutes and he reserved 45 minutes right off the bat for Q&A that's 915 left and he was going to have a few guest speakers each about an hour and a couple of breaks so, so subtracting all that out we had left over 720 minutes he had seven main points in his training that he was going to present himself that came out to 102 minutes per topic when you've got a long training, thinking by the minute allows you to slow down and really think about how much content you could reasonably provide in that amount of time. My friend realized he did not want to do 102 minutes, that's 1.7 hours, on functional contextualism. And it forces you to think about how you could break up the content with different types of activities to keep the audience engaged. So what we're saying here is when we when we think of content first for shorter trainings, we will pretty much always end up cramming too much content into a training. And then we'll realize, wait, I only have a couple of minutes 
to, to go over each of these concepts that I want to go over. If we think of content first, for really long trainings, we end up uh, overestimating uh, how much we can actually perform. So we might end up with three hours on, on a concept that we really don't have three hours worth of content to, to do. So the basic process of thinking by the minute goes like this. Step one, take the amount of time you have allotted for the event and convert it into minutes. Step two, subtract any known quantities from this time. Common known quantities are time for questions, lengths of any video content or demonstrations that you have, time for introductions, maybe some buffer minutes for technical difficulties or getting people settled into their seats. Step three, the remainder of the time is how much you have left to fill with content. This is an opportunity for experimentation and creativity. When we structure trainings using this method, we set aside time for really important things up front, and then use the remaining time to plan for content. In other words, we're never really doing a one hour training. We're always doing a 42 minute training with 15 minutes for questions at the end and a couple minutes at the top for introductions, for example. We're taking a, a principle that when we are looking at kind of a blank canvas, we, we end up being more liberal with, with the content than we perhaps need to be. If you think about a, a tube of toothpaste, when you get a brand new tube of toothpaste, you start using it, you're not really thinking about saving every last drop of the toothpaste at that point. So you, you can be pretty liberal with how much you put on your toothbrush and you're just going about your business. But once you get to the very end of that toothpaste tube, suddenly you start to think about how much you are using and trying to extend the life of that toothpaste tube. Here, rather than starting off with the blank canvas of, you know, a three hour training, four hour training, six hour training, three day training, we're trying to compress it up front. We're subtracting those known quantities of things that are already really important to you. We're, we're taking all those out and then we're um, squeezing that tube of toothpaste down, forcing us to really try to um, savor each of those little moments that we actually have of workable time for the training. What should you do if you are a trainer and you want to craft learning objectives that really help people assess the content and structure of your training event? You might be in a situation where you need a certain number of learning objectives per each hour of your event or something like that. In some cases, you might be in a situation where you need like three learning objectives per hour. Well, in these cases, rather than craft uh, six or a dozen learning objectives, each about a separate topic, you want to sort of link them together into groups, creating a set of objectives uh, that focus on uh, a single topic, but accentuate different components of the training. Here's an example. Participants will be able to explain three main points about topic A. This learning objective points toward a didactic component of the training. Participants will be able to implement practical topic A intervention. This learning objective points towards an experiential component of the training. Participants will be able to lead discussions regarding topic A. This learning objective points towards an audience interaction component of the training. In this way, we have three learning objectives, each centered around topic A. And then we can just repeat this process. If we have topic B, then we can have a set of three or four learning objectives all about topic B, and then another set about topic C, and so forth. This way, people who are looking at your course content, they can read your objectives and they can get a sense of how much time might be spent on each of the, the components. 
the implication of thinking by the minute in this way is not only useful for you as a trainer, it's also useful for you as a participant of trainings. There are so many trainings and courses out there these days, it's really unbelievable. Even I have a course, it's on the ACT Matrix. You can find it at theactmatrix.com. So if you're looking at all these training opportunities, how can you tell which ones might be worth your money and time? When you find a training that you're interested in, focus on two things, the length of the training and the number of learning objectives. If a workshop is two hours long, and it has eight learning objectives, then that means if everything is split evenly, each learning objective would only have about 15 minutes devoted to it. So you can ask yourself at that point, is it really worth paying X amount of dollars to learn 15 minutes of information about eight different things? You'll find that the best trainings are those that have a smaller subset of learning objectives or topics with a lot of time to focus on them. A few key pointers for trainers. Number one, taking questions as you go during an event rather than setting aside time at the end for questions will always, 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 always end up with you running out of time for your content. What I mean by this is if you attempt to take questions freeform, in other words, letting the audience interrupt you, letting them raise their hand and then taking a question as you go, this will always result in you having to crunch the content of your training at the end, simply because it's just very difficult to manage the time when we're being interrupted in this way. People tend not to have simple questions. They have maybe advanced questions. They also don't just have questions. They have a comment, a story, and a question all rolled into one. So that ends up eating a lot more time than you think it would. If you do not want to just put a chunk of time at the end for questions, you can take questions as you go. You just have to structure it into the uh, content of your training. So what that means is you would subtract portions of your training's time out for questions meaning you can, you can present a key topic or a component and then always allocate at the end eight minutes for questions, for example. And then you can give the audience a chance to ask. So you would pause and say, this is a point where you can ask questions. Any, anybody have anything to say or comments about what you just witnessed, what you just saw? So if you have four components or four key points in your training, then you would have four eight minute segments for questions or whatever it is that you decide. So you're making sure to subtract those out of your time up front because that would be a known quantity. Two, if you were doing a shorter training event, and I would classify that as anything two hours or less, do not try to cram the six core processes into 3.75 minutes each or 7.5 minutes each, please do not do that. If your training is one or two hours long, you're much better off structuring it entirely around one large experiential exercise or one of the other key components that we looked at um, a few slides ago. So that would be like, maybe it's a, a whole hour on, that's just a discussion, just questions and answers and just kind of talking like a, a round table, or maybe it's a whole hour of experiential work, or maybe it's a whole hour of didactic, or maybe it's a whole hour of audience interaction. Something like the act matrix or the choice point are really good for those situations. You can do like a good 45 minutes setting up the, the matrix or the choice point and then have time afterwards to really talk about it a little bit and process it out. Your job in those short trainings is not to give the audience every ounce of information on a topic. It's to get people interested in something enough that they'll want to look it up and do more training, hopefully with you. So don't try to cram a lot of information into short trainings. Instead, focus on what would give them the best taste of this information and, and whet their appetite for more. 
And for long trainings, remember to subtract break times and, and vary the components across time. When you're subtracting break times, always subtract a little bit more than you think because it's nice to say we're going to take a 10 minute break, but that usually ends up as a 15 minute break. Um, if you're doing breakout rooms for, for audiences to get into like on Zoom, uh, the problem with the breakout rooms is they're either always too short or they're too long. It's very difficult to accurately determine how much time you need. But if you think about any training that you've ever done where the presenter put you into a breakout room with a couple other people, what usually happens? Well, the first thing that usually happens is you have to kind of introduce yourselves to each other and then you end up saying, oh, hey, I haven't seen you since the last conference. How are you doing? How are the kids? And then you end up spending a little bit of that time just kind of chatting with one another. And then, and then you have to think, okay, what did the presenter want us to do uh, during this time? And then you have to sort out who's going to be sort of the natural leader of the breakout group and say, all right, guys, let's just do it like this. All of that eats up minutes. And so what ends up happening is in those breakout rooms, in my experience, we always run out of time before we can complete the, the objective. So often we might allocate five minutes for a breakout room and almost certainly that's not going to be enough. So if you do use breakout rooms, you're going to want to use them judiciously and really try to run some experiments about uh, how long is this actually going to take. So you might do like a little rehearsal or a demo with some people, grab you know three or four people, tell them to just kind of sit down with you and work it out how much time uh, would it actually take to do this activity? Let that be the time that is allotted for a breakout room. And then of course you want to vary components across time. So what that means is we don't want to do four hours of didactic information in a row and then two hours of experiential at the end. If possible, we might want to structure a training so that the uh, it, we have like a natural repetition. So we might have 45 minutes didactic then space for questions and discussion, 15, 20 minutes of questions and discussion, and then an experiential component or a demonstration, and then questions and discussion after that, and then more didactic. Once you uh, break things down into the time, you can now have like easy segments that you can plug and play into longer trainings to repeat uh, you know, for as long as you want. So you could end up doing like a 45 day training but really it's um, one hour segments or 45 minute segments and a lot of them just repeating in a certain sequence the same way that a scarf or, or the shirt you're wearing or, or anything that you knit uh, is just a certain sequence of, of pattern over and over and over again that makes a very big picture. I hope you found something helpful in this little presentation today. If so, you can contact me uh, at jacob at theactmatrix.com. If you have questions or if you need specific help about how to structure like an actual training that is coming up and you want to run it by somebody and just kind of say, hey, does this look right? Feel free to email me and uh, you, can, you can show me what you've got prepared so far and I can definitely help you out with that. Thank you very much.